Hello, Michael here for the Center for Digital Archaeology to talk about something we're truly excited about, Modular Codify. This is our new approach to developing databases and all sorts of fun stuff, specifically for archaeology. And for today's conversation, we're talking really about FileMaker and archaeology. So our modular approach is basically following in the footsteps of Todd Geist's really awesome modular FileMaker idea, which is to build very small things that do one thing really well that you can then assemble into a solution that is awesome. So go to modularfilemaker.org and check it all out. We're following the examples there. We're actually borrowing from a lot of those examples and our, our, our plan is to contribute back a lot of things to the project. So what you're seeing here is a combination of things like connector selector which and master detail, which are modular FileMaker uh, releases, and then things we are building. So everything you see at the green check mark is something we've either completely finished or is very close to done. And today I'm gonna to talk about an integration we're doing with iBooks um, we call FMP to HTML. So what's that all about? Well, you probably know that iBooks is Apple's um, response to the PDF document basically, or an ebook. Um, so um, it runs on iPad and it runs on Mac. And these are these beautiful interactive books that are more than just books because it can have all sorts of things like galleries and video and interactive diagrams and 3D and all the stuff you see here. And they have released a free iBooks author environment so you can put together these, these books. And I, we think it's really, a really cool idea, you know, a, a counterpart to the classic monograph um, that's printed or a PDF version of the same because you have this beautiful interactive experience, um, all sorts of different capabilities, and the books can be published, self-published, um, on the um, Apple's store for free or even for a charge if you were so inclined. But what we don't want to do is just build pretty PDF documents, okay? It has to be more than just a published thing. We want to move beyond the metaphor of a book because we're talking about computers and iPads. I mean, it should be able to do something much more engaging than just being a passive um, document that's digital. So for that, we want to be able to have interactive data and media and be able to actually have this whole database narrative idea where the databases can themselves can actually inform the experience and vice versa. So we have some challenges. The first challenge is Apple does have this notion of, an, of a URL. You can click and open up a web page, but the web page has to be an HTTP or TTPS page. So FileMaker has its own URL scheme and it doesn't work with that. Secondly, multiple devices. Could be on an iPad, could be on a Mac. Gotta deal with that. So the workflow of building all these URLs could be incredibly uh, painful and we wanted to make it not that way. So our solution is to build a module we're calling FMP to HTML, which I'm gonna demo right now, and then build out a de dedicated domain, in other words, a, a web a site that all these pages could live on. Our criteria to, for this module is that you should be able to open any database running on FMGo on iOS, in other words, on our iPads, but we've actually moved beyond that so you can also open up any database running on your Mac. You should be able to run a script to perform any action within that database, easily publish these web pages so that they can be openly shared for anybody that might have a database running on FMGo. And uh, you should be able to do this for tens or even hundreds of URLs really easily. So let's just give you a walkthrough of what we have figured out here. This is um, iBooks author, the authoring environment. You can see I'm putting together this little book just for fun here, call it The Last Train on the Plane. And uh, you can have a table of contents, interactive media as an intro. So it's a really beautiful um, experience, very easy. You can drag and drop media in, drag and drop pages. Um, you can bring things in from Microsoft Word, um, insert chapters from Word or InDesign. So really some nice features. You can see I've dropped in some pages with some graphics here. Um, directly at the database, as I'll show in a minute. And down here we have this, uh, this press day image I've added and some press day text talking about the press day where the dagger was found. That's all very exciting and chat up here. So, once you've kind of got your book laid out, you can always test it. And how you can test it by is hitting this preview button. So I hit the preview button and it's going to open up my iBook 
um, in iBooks. So here it is. And I can move forward and back. So I'm just sliding with my fingers here. And I'm going to click this picture and things are going to happen. What I'm expecting to happen is that, sorry, this picture right here, is that it's going to open up our last house in the hill database in FileMaker. It's going to run a search for press day 1997 in the Bach area, discover the dagger. Um, so let's see what happens. So I'm going to click to open up a page. Now I've set this up to show you guys that um, the first time I do this, if I don't click remember my choice, it's saying, do you want to open up FileMaker? So I'm going to go ahead and say, sure. It's going to open the database, get a little five second pause here so you can see the screen. It's now running a search and it's just done a search for press day 1997 in the Bach area. So I can roll through here. We can see volume pages, we can see places and we can see media. So here's that picture as you see right there. There's this caption and we can see in our highlight here that it has done that search perfectly. So that is a pretty cool experience and um, you know, there you have it. So that's the full experience. I, I made it, I built a link here in iBooks um, and it actually opens up my database and does stuff. So how did we do this? Uh, let's close the database here and open up our module. So here's our module, FMP to HTML. To build a FileMaker protocol URL that will open up something in FileMaker, you have to do a couple of things. You need to have, basically this is the URL and it's doing a bunch of stuff as you can see and I'll, I'll walk us through that. But I wanted, as, as I said, we can't just put this URL in naked into um, um, into the web, you know, it, it needs to be actually in a page because we want to be able to use, if I try to paste this into iBooks, it hits that FMP and freaks out. So you can get the page a name. <clears throat> oh, let me back up. So I wrote a little bit of code here, borrowed some from the web and then peppered and spiced it up so that we have basically a redirect happening here and then a little bit of JavaScript for that redirect then some code here that's being replaced by my FMP URL. Very straightforward. So I give the page a name. I say that the device is hosted or running on desktop or iOS. If I change that, it changes the style of the URL. And then a login and password. Now I would recommend doing this if that if this can be exposed because you're giving away the login and password to the database. But for today, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, then the host name, just plain like this, the name of the file you want to open. Again, this file can be living on your iPad locally. It does not have to be served. So this entire experience can happen uh, right on your iPad, which is really cool. But much more exciting, you can run any script inside of the database. You just have to know its name. You can have a script parameter. This is FileMaker GeekSpeak for, you can pass a parameter to that script to do something. You can also pass variables, so if you understand how that kind of stuff works, I'm creating a variable called search, and it's a local variable to this particular script, and it's going to have a value of press day 1997 in the block area. So we put all that together, and it looks like this big mess, um, and then what happens is you hit this button, and it creates a web page. Boom. And that web page appears, as you can see here, um, on my desktop. And then I'm going to load that up using my favorite tool here, Cyberduck, to our um, website. Um, and it's going to produce a page that looks, that looks like this. So that's the basic idea. So uh, once I have this URL, I copy it, go into iBooks, author, pull that back up. Uh, let's say I want to run it on this page. So um, I would simply enable as a hyperlink, change this to web page, and paste the URL. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, if I preview this, it's gonna open up that particular page now. I click, it's gonna ask me once again, launch the application, it's gonna launch the database, and it's gonna run the search. So that's the full workup.